Uh, I think it was in the beginning of the summer, I went to work in uh, the same sex marriage bill that just been passed. I think it was that the following, the following weekend when people go out and get married. Um, it was very depressing. There were other things happening in my life. My face, my face was just dragging off the floor um, as I walked into work. When I get off the elevator, I walk through the interior door, I walk down the corridor, I go down the corridor as far as I can, there's a guy sitting in the queue, I go to the right, two queues, my queue's on the left, I'm by the window, I can't complain. But as I was walking to work, my queue, my face is down, it was just very, very not at the time. This individual who sits at the end there saw my face and he stopped me and talked to me to see how I was going to go. And I'm starting to get you know, this is happening, and this is happening, and the same sex marriage joke I've had, and he's like, whoa, what's happening? I got married this week. And I, I was like, wow, I'm okay. Instantaneously, on the drop of a dime, I had to. Love the sinner, but hate the sinner. It's the and I was shocked. I've never really had that kind of experience before. And so what happened was, we, we talked for 15 minutes or so about it. We, we haven't talked about it since. But he made two statements that I found very intriguing. Statement one. 85%, 85% of intelligent people reject the idea of God. Therefore, I can't believe in God. Eighty-five percent of intelligent people reject the idea of God. In essence, you tell me I'm not intelligent. <laughs> and the immigrated, I'm not sure if he came from mainland China or Taiwan China, but he immigrated from China. How, he said, can a fair and loving God exist the supreme being, how can he exist when ancient Chinese and ancient Egypt, Egyptian civilizations did not know him? And the implication of that is that they're not in heaven. He they wanted to know how that's fair. And we discussed it for 15 or 20 minutes. I made no, I made no dent in his arguments. Um, he, he, he's already made up his mind. He's going to side with the 85% of the intelligent people and he's going to reject the idea of God. However, after the conversation I walked out to my queue, which is you know, 20 feet away, and I'm remembering the Sunday school lesson that I taught 10 to 15 years ago, which discussed the origins of idolatry. And I've renamed it to Six Steps Away from God. And this helped me understand why he is the way he is. And I think it was worth looking at show the pray. Heavenly Father, we live in what is becoming an increasingly difficult and hostile world. And Lord, the more hostile and more difficult the world gets, the more we need your presence in our lives. The more we need your wisdom. The more we need to be with others of life. Help us this morning, Lord, as we look at a passage in Scripture which would indicate how people fallen away from God, have gone away from God, and have replaced God with something else. Help us, Lord, to understand in our own personal lives how to prevent us from forgetting the Lord. How to help us to prevent from loving you. Help us to be the Lord to help people. We know you love for us. We know you have seen you Help us to have the courage and wisdom, especially wisdom the right spirit of God, to tell people how they too can be saved and have their sins forgiven. Help us, O Lord, as people of this society, to begin to take some action to help the society understand there is a God. He does care. We do care. Help us, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for each and every one in the room. We thank you for each and every family represented here, Lord. Maybe there are some saved ones. Maybe there are some unsaved ones here, God. Help them maybe somehow understand they need to be saved. Those of us who are saved.
say to everyone, help us to understand how the bridge gets stronger for you in a world that is increasingly against us. And we pray for the families here, who are represented here. If I have family members, everybody has family members who are not saved, who are not here. Help us to see these saved. We thank you for the great blessings that you give us with God. We ask you to remember pastor the same as they come home. But remember, man, who is uh, with you sick over the last four weeks. We pray you that it's here. We pray for Alex this afternoon as he comes forward your word. Bless you, God. All I can say to you here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like you to turn from Romans to chapter 16. Remember the original context of this passage was to teach at that time teenagers. Where did, where did idolatry come from? And then we're going to extend it to what's happening in our world today. Romans chapter 16. I'm sorry, Romans 1, Romans 1, Romans chapter 1. We'll start at verse 16 and we'll read down to verse 25. Romans 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was working. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like an incorruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Notice here in verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made by the corruptible man. And that's the verse that was emphasized in that Sunday school lesson. That's where I was came from. Let's just step through this a little bit. In, in, uh, if we call it six steps away from God, uh, Verse 21, because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. One, they, they knew God, but they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful. Two, neither were thankful. Three, but became vain in their imaginations. Three, but became vain in their imaginations. Four, and their foolish heart was darkened, and their foolish heart was darkened. Five, professing themselves to be wise and became fools. And six, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. What happens when people stop acknowledging God and His glory? What happens? Well, that's the first step away from God. I want you to consider it's not so much a big topic anymore because the, trans the transfer of knowledge has happened. At one point in time, there was a big debate. Is it evolution or creation? That whole debate was about, if it's evolution, then we can dispute the Bible and throw it out. I remember a friend of mine, and I, he was heated. I said, he, wanted, he wanted to teach evolution only. I said, well, you mean evolutionists can't handle the thought of an ulterior theory like creation? And he got mad. Well, now they have to teach evolution. God got out. Yesterday I was helping Anna study her social studies. It's amazing what schools are doing, and we parents don't know about it until we help our kids with the homework. One of the statements, she's, she's in fifth grade and she's studying social studies. One of the statements regarding the fact that at one point in time, all of Earth was one large thing. Scientists will tell you what it was. I'm going to show you the Bible will tell you what it was. And uh, 
according to, Sarah, to him his uh, social studies book, what happened was that land mass got split into several smaller land masses. They became what's called uh, tectonic plates. And they have the tectonic plate theory, and that's where we get, you know, one plate smashes into a plate and you get a mountain, or one plate dies all a plate, and you get a valley and you see uh, two plates smash and you get an earthquake, you know, that's where it comes from. Turn with me real briefly, real briefly, Genesis and chapter 25. Chapter 10, chapter 10, Genesis, chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10, verse 25. And, and they're reviewing, they were reviewing the names of, of, of people born on the earth. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his day was the earth divided. I'm telling you, God divided this earth. Yes, there might have been one land yet, but in the days of one man, he divided it. It didn't happen over millions of years, according to the like, economics the theory that they're teaching my daughter. It happened. The days of one man, the days of one man, 70 years, 30 years, 40 years, I don't know how many days, but it happened, it didn't happen over millions of years. But again, the idea is to take, we take God, it used to be when I was in college, we studied plate tectonics, and a friend and I got into an argument about whether or not the Bible even mentioned there was one man in the rest. Even though it does, it does. It just wasn't a million of years that God was saying it was a blessing. Marriage. More recently, marriage has been redefined. I don't want to make fun of the civil rights movement. It is very important in this country. It is still important in this country. Certain issues does happen. 